when I first watched that uh, update, I was really crying out loud to God because it was, they were talking about the next generation. Diba? Imagine, they're very encouraged with what they have right now and moving forward that God is going to do something for the next generation. Let me just ask this question. But before that, let me just say thank you for really praying. For really praying for... For, for, for our missionaries around the globe. And thank you for really partnering with them. Hindi nyo po alam kung gaano uh, nakakarating yung lahat po ng support na meron kayo in behalf of every nation and in behalf of Victory. We just want to say thank you so much for partnering. Let me just give a hand to God for that. Like what I've said, sobrang grateful ako doon because we're talking about the, the next generation. I'm a campus missionary and also a pastor. And my name is Christian. And uh, alam niyo po ba na even here in uh, Victory Pasig, God is really doing something amazing to the next generation. Every Saturday, sino din yung young, per, young people kay student? Can you just raise your hand? Student? Wala. Ayun, meron. Taas nyo lang, taas nyo. Yan, mga sudyante. We would like to encourage you. We have a community here every Saturday at 4 p.m. Mayroon tayong youth service. We just want to encourage you to come and join us. Ano to? Uh, masaya tong community na to because it's all about the next generation. Okay ba yun? And sino to feeling yan ka? Ayan. Ayan. Madami talagang pag feeling yan eh. Uh, I'm really excited for today uh, because finally back po tayong on-site. Sino dito na miss mo yung katabi mo? Ay, ay grabe may pagtingin talaga eh. Miss kita. Oh, oh, na-miss mo yung katabi mo. And also for those people tuning online, I hope you will stay with us throughout the service. And we're so grateful because finally, on-site na po ulit tayo. And maybe some of you here uh, wasn't able to uh, go here because something happened to you. We're praying na okay na kayo. I was talking to some of those people na na affect ng, ng typhoon. At least nagkaroon daw sila ng baha hanggang, hanggang ano ba dito? Sakong... So, and, pero ngayon now, okay na. How many of you here, you're grateful because you know God is really working and protecting us from any calamity? Amen. Diba? Last week, Pastor Anthony uh, started our series break. So, nakasigilis break po tayo. And we're talking about the book of John. There's one specific passage in the book of John, which is John 15, yung pong naging in-impress ni Lord sa heart natin na pag-usapan. The reason why is because this book of John, ang nagsulat po nito ay si John, and also ang heart po niya at that time is for him to provoke the Christian believers. Ibig sabihin, ito na po yung mga umatin, um, uh, nagpa-follow kay Christ, but because of false teaching and also persecution, they were running away from their faith. So tumatakbo sila, nakukonfuse sila what's gonna happen. Sometimes, or somehow, tire with all the things that's happening to us, around us, sometimes nagaganon tayo, nakukonfuse tayo. And we want, ako po, ang heart ko as your pastor, is for us to be as one, together as one, we will be in faith that the God that we're serving is the one true God. That's why excited po ako for today. Nung binabasa ko po ito, inaaral ko po itong pinagpag-usapan natin today, sobrang even ako, na minister ako dito at niremind ako ni Lord about His great plan for all of us. Can I ask everyone to stand up and open your Bibles in John chapter 15, verses 12 to, 12 to 17. If this is your first time, I hope na may enjoy nyo po. Meron po tayo screen on, uh, uh, in front of you so that you can follow us. But if you're coming here for, the, for almost three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, I hope that you have your own Bible. Mapasoftware man yan or hard copy. It says here in verse 12, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you to command you no longer do i call you servant for servant doesn't know what his master is doing but i have called you friends for all that i have heard from my father i have made known to you you did not choose me but i chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the father in my name he may give it to you these things I have I commanded you so that you will love one another. Let's just pray. Lord, we just want to say thank you for the reading of your word. 
We pray that you will just illuminate your word. Use my mouth, use my tongue. I pray that you will bless the preaching of your word and even touch our hearts. Whatever hard hearts that we have right now, Lord, we pray that you will turn into flesh and receive your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. You may take your seats. Let me just share to you a story. Um, alam niyo po ba na as of now, some of the col- columnists, they're saying that this is a post-pandemic. Post-pandemic na po tayo, kaya try to imagine with me, pwede nang uh, allowed na. It's up to you if you're gonna wear masks or not. And pero, if we're gonna go back to the peak of pandemic, isa sa mga things na sobrang hirap na ginagawa na we don't know what to do, we don't know what's gonna happen next, and most especially, we don't know if we're gonna live. Hindi natin alam kung mabubuhay pa tayo. Pero because Filipinos are very resilient and we, ha- we, we want to do something else, alam niyo po ba, ang daming na uso, di ba? Ang daming natin na kwento back then, yung iba naging nagluto-luto ng ganito. Pero ang hindi ko makakalimutan na isa sa pinakamagandang naging history, mapalalaki o mapababae, yung naging plantito at plantita. Sino dito umamin ka, naging plantito at plantita ka? Taas kamay, yeah, nahihiya pa, yan. Alam mo yung kinakausap mo yung ano, kinakausap mo yung, uh, anong pangalan nito Yung mga halaman, tapos nag-Facebook ka, mine, mine. Tapos pinapadeliver mo yung ano, yung mga halaman. Tapos minsan, hindi mo napapansin, jungle na pala yung bahay mo. May nakasabit dito, may nakasabit dyan, pag naglakad ka, natutisod ka na, kasi parang gubat na. But to be honest, it really brings joy. Tama? Natutuwa ka kapag, kapag nakikita mo yung halaman mo, hindi na mamatay. Pero in reality, ako po, naging plantito rin ako. Pero hindi ko alam, kahit anong gawin ko, namamatay pati cactus. I don't really, I really don't know why. Namamatay pati cactus. Imagine cactus na to, ha? hindi mo na kailangan diligan. Hindi ko alam kung hindi siya nagagandaan sa boses ko kapag kinakantahan ko. Naks, kinakantahan yung halaman eh. But in reality, isa sa pinaka... Uh, naging nakakatawa kapag yung mga halaman mo, even like for iba, nagkamatis, yung iba, nag, uh, mga, mga, mga basil, yung mga social, no? yung mga rosemary, yung mga ganito, yung iba naman, normal, bunggambilya, yung bunggambongga, but yung iba naman, yung gusto niya yung mga bearing fruit, fruits. Like for example, kalamansi. Di ba? Yung mother and ko, nagtanim ng kalamansi. At tuwan-tuwa kami kapag nakaka-harvest kami. Alam mo yun, parang, uy, ilang kilo na to. Parang dalawang piraso, wala pang isang guhit yan eh. Pero sayang-saya ka na. <laughs> Dahil meron ka na harvest, pwede na itong pang ano, pork steak. At pwede na pang sausawan. And every time na nakikita mo na nagbe-bear ng fruit yung isang plant or isang halaman, sometimes matutulala ka rin. At tatanungin mo at sasabihin mo, buti pa yung puno may bunga. Pero ako, yung buhay ko, parang walang bu- kabunga-bunga. Hugot yan. <laughs> Tama ba ako? Natanong niyo yan. Buti pa to, may isa ng bunga. Samantalang ako, yung karir ko, walang kabunga-bunga. Buti pa to, may bunga. Samantalang yung love life ko, zero pa rin. Mag-Christmas na. That's reality. Sometimes we're gonna ask that. Sometimes, you're gonna feel like you're dis- disconnected with God. Lord, nagpipray naman ako, nagbabasa naman ako ng Bible, pero bakit walang bunga? Or sometimes, tinitignan mo yung buhay mo, at tinitignan mo yung buhay ng ibang tao, buti pa siya, puro bunga, may kaholding hand siya. Buti pa siya, napopromote, buti pa siya, nag-grow yung business. Buti pa siya, nakakapagtaas na ng kamay ngayon sa praise and worship, ako hindi ko pa rin mataas. Every day is a question. Lord, magkakabunga pa ba ako? If you're gonna try to evalu- evaluate your life, if you're gonna try to look at your life right now, are you bearing fruit? Or para kang cactus na inalagaan ko? <laughs> Hindi mabuhay-buhay. To be honest, this is so funny. But in reality, if you will just put yourself to that position, nakakawalang buhay talaga. That's why John wrote this one. Sinulat to ni John because 
They're the same situation of the church back then. Parang wala nang buhay. Parang wala nang bunga. Because of the different circumstances that they're experiencing. Imagine false teaching. False teaching is something that is so big at that time. Ito yung mga time where in yung faith mo masuswerve sa left or masuswerve sa right. To the point that you cannot even declare the goodness of God in your life. That's why John is telling them, even in that verse, sabi niya dito, there's a key in order for you to declare that you are fruitful. Sabi niya dito, in verse 4, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruits by itself unless it abides in, in the vine. Neither you unless you abide in me. In verse 5, sabi niya dito, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever ab- abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me, you can do nothing. In this passage, verses 4 to 5, four times, sinabi dito yung abide or abides. Ibig sabihin nito, there's a weight, there's a value in it, na sinasabi niya dito na you need to understand para siyang prototype, para siyang, para siyang uh, metaphor na sinasabi ni, ni John, na tandaan mo na yung vine na sinasabi niyo, this is Jesus Christ, and we are the branches. You have to abide in that. You have to be connected with that so that you will experience yung pagiging fruitful. So that magbunga ka. Ito yung sinasabi niya dito because apart, sabay-sabay tayo, for apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from God, you can do nothing. Sobrang clear yung pagkasabi ni John dito. If you are not connected, then every time you will face difficulties, every time you will tend to compare yourself to other people, you're gonna say, Lord, wala akong kabunga-bunga. At tumahimik po sila. Let me just get that word abide. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng abide? Bakit ba sobrang importante yung sinasabi ni John na you have to abide? Because abiding in Christ means a constant communion with Him, trusting His Word, and allowing it to transform us. That is abiding. Meaning, you are connected to the vine, and as you connect to the vine, that is your constant communion, or communion with God. Ibig sabihin, you are enjoying your relationship with God, you are trusting His Word, and definitely, you are allowing God to move in and through you. Sometimes kasi when we abide, which is not complete, feeling natin connected tayo kay Christ, tas nagpe-fellowship ka, nakakipagtalon-talon ka kay Lord, pero ito yung miss natin, you are not allowing God to transform you. Hindi mo inaalaw si Lord, Lord, magmamatigas ako in this specific area. Lord, in this specific area, pwede bang ipaubaya mo na to sa akin? Yun yung sinasabi niya dito. It's all about abiding. That's why for today, I'm gonna share to you through truths. Ha, through truths that we need to appropriate in terms of abiding in Christ. The first thing that I really want you to understand as you abide in Him, as you commune with God, as you trust in His Word, and as you allow God, always appropriate that God called us to be fruitful. That is the first thing you really have to uh, uh, set in your mind and even in your heart that God called us to be fruitful. Hindi to yung literal na tat, hindi to yung literal na, na nadadami ka. No. Ang ibig sabihin nito, John chapter 15 verse 6, 16a, sabi niya dito, you did not choose me but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. I really want to use um, yung amplified version. I love this Amplified version, on how he crafted it. Sabi niya dito in Amplified, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. I have appointed and placed and purposefully planted you so that you would go and bear fruit. Sabi niya in this passage, unang-una, sabi niya chosen. Pangalawa, appointed. Meaning, God handpicked you. Pinili na to ng Panginoon. The reason why John was saying this is because back then, nung time nila, it was a common practice for the disciple for them to choose their own rabbi. 
Ibig sabihin, mamimili sila kung sino yung magbe-mentor sa kanila. Mamimili sila kung sino yung gusto nila makasama. Mamimili sila kung sino yung mga tao pwede makatulong sa kanila in a specific area of their lives. Pero ngayon, God is telling them, Jesus Christ is telling them, no, pinili kita because every area of your life, I'm gonna do something about it. Not just specific, not just a, uh, not just a single thing, not just, not just the thing that you really want to, at least to enhance. At hindi lang yun. Yes, you are handpicked, appointed, and chosen. Sabi niya pa dito, you are placed and purposely planted. Ang galing lang, no? Kung paano na to kinraft. Ibig sabihin, pinili ka ni Lord for you to experience Him and at the same time, for you to understand you are in the right place. No matter what the cost. No matter what the cost. At sinasabi niya din dito na sometimes yung mga disciples kasi have this wrong connotation. Yung connotation na nila, no Lord, eto lang area talaga. Please, wag na yung iba. Wag mo muna akong dalhin dito. Pero si Jesus, very intentional kung saan siya pupunta. Alam niya kung anong mangyayari at alam niya kung sino imimit niya. The same way with our life. The reason why you are there is because God will do something amazing in order for you to experience Him in a different way. Kasi nakakasawa kapag pare-parehas lang. Tama? Sino dito hindi ka magsasawa na everyday ulam mo hot dog? Di ba nakakasawa? God is very, very gracious to all of us. God will do something in order for us to experience Him in a different way. At sinabi niya dito, the main reasons why I've chosen you, why I'm appointing, appointing you, and the same time placed you for purposefully, and planted you for one specific reason. To go and bear much fruit. Ano ba itong bear much fruit na sinasabi dito? Magkakaroon ba ako dito ng manga? Magkakaroon ba ako ng lansones? Ganon? No, it's not about that. Sinasabi dito, if you're gonna go back to the, Bible, uh, to the, to the uh, er, uh, early, early passages or verses, sinasabi dito, unang-una, I want you to understand in terms of bearing much fruit, meron tayong tinatawag na internal. Internal bearing of fruit. Pag sinabi natin bearing of fruit, fruit ano to produced? Meaning it could be external, it could be internal. Ito yung work ng Panginoon sa buhay natin. The first thing that I really want you to understand is the word slave to friend. You feel like, Lord, parang walang nangyayari sa paligid ko, pero kamusta ba internal mo? Kamusta ka ba as being? Your soul. How are you? Fruitful ba yung soul mo? Sinasabi niya dito in John chapter 15 verses 14 to 15, ito yung unang-unang verses na binasa natin, You are my friends if you do, not, if you do what I commanded you to command, I command you. No longer do I call you servant, for the servant doesn't know what his master is doing. But I have called you friend. The Bible is telling us the internal fruit that we can declare and appropriate that we are bearing in our lives right now is from slave or servant to friends. Pastor, hindi ko maintindihan. Hindi ko din maintindihan. Joke. Ibig sabihin neto, God is working in us. And as God work in and through us, we are not servant. We are not slave of sin anymore. But we can always go to God because He is our friend. That is your new relationship with God that you can rejoice with. 
Imagine, kahit gaano ka makasalanan, you can always go to God and understand that He is our friend. I don't know about you, but for me, sobrang grateful ako that God is doing something in me in order for me to tell and declare that I am a friend of God. But in reality, there are areas of our lives that it seems like hindi pa friend kay Lord. Lord, my finances, parang hindi tayo friend. Kasi, I'm not giving my tithes. Because I feel like I'm losing everything if I'm gonna be, give my tithes. Lord, this relationship, it seems like hindi pa tayo friend. Kasi I know that I'm committing sexual immorality. Lord, in terms of forgiveness, I think para hindi pa tayo friend. Kasi hindi ko kayang magpatawad. Lord, I think in this area of my life, in terms of my study, nangungodi ko pa rin ako. Kahit online na. Hindi pa rin tayo friend. Lord, hindi pa rin tayo friend kasi I never repented on my sins. But the good thing about friends, sino dito you appreciate your friends? Wala, walang friends dito? Lapitan nyo si JB, magiging friend kayo. Okay? Sino dito you appreciate your friends? You know what? One characteristic of a friend that they really like is someone you can lean on. Uh, Diba? Is someone you can lean on? Pwede mo tawagan, paulit-ulit yung kwento mo, tapos paulit-ulit din yung tawa ninyo, isa lang naman yung pinag-usapan nyo last week, yun pa rin. Diba? Tapos hindi kayo nagsasawa, minsan nga nagkakapalit na kayo ng mukha. Tapos parehas na kayo ng dress, minsan nagugulit. Uy, parehas tayo, syempre parehas tayo yung uh, palit ng gusto eh. So nagkakaroon kayong ganun, com- nagkakaroon kayong somehow uh, point of conversation, tapos na-enjoy, na-enjoy yung company ng bawat isa, tapos hindi lang na-enjoy ninyo, yung gustong gusto nyo makasama siya, Minsan nga, in reality, mas gusto mo pang kausap yung friend mo kaysa magulang mo. At tumahimik po sila. <laughs> and every time you are with your friends, there's peace, right? And every time you are with your friends, you are very vulnerable. Meaning, lahat ng baho mo Lahat ng secret mo, or yung iba, ilan, ilan lang, nasasabi mo, confidently. Miski pangit, minsan nga confident ka pa, eh, nagyayabang ka pa eh. But the question is, are you the same with God? Are you vulnerable? And will you allow God to work in and through you? Our friends are very helpful. To be honest, ako sobrang grateful ako sa church community na meron tayo. Sino ito grateful ka sa church community? Mga victory group leader mo, victory group member mo, ay, part ng victory group mo. Di ba? Wala? Wala talaga? Hindi kayo masaya sa church na to? Sino ito masaya kayo? Masaya? Masaya ito kasi syempre meron kang nakakausap, meron kang nakakakwentuhan. Tama? Pero mas masaya kung pati si Lord kasama mo. Ang saya nun na pag nag-moment ka kay Lord, umiiyak ka, tas may magko-comfort sa'yo. I-re-remind ka ni Lord sa promises niya, kahit ayaw mong bitawan tong kasalanan to, isisecure ka ni Lord na meron siya mas magandang plano para sa'yo. Parang ganito yan. Sino dito? Papapiliin ko kayo. Isang plato ng kare-kare with only rice plus masarap na baguong. Versus buffet. Kare-kare. Buffet. Some... <laughs> Some... <laughs> Pastor, mukhang mahirap yata yun kasi parehas mahirap. Masarap eh. Pero, to be honest, sometimes, nakafocus lang tayo dito sa kare-kare na to, na sabi ni Lord, bitawa mo yung kare-kare na yan kasi meron akong buffet para sa'yo. But you're not allowing God. Allow God. Because you're not a servant. You are a friend. 
may kaibigan ka na bang gustong ipahamak ka? Meron po, pinahamak nga ako eh. Minahal nga niyo yung mahal ko eh. Ouch. <laughs> Mahap di pa. Pero si Lord, hindi niya gagawin sa iyo yan. That's why, I'm encouraging you, if you feel like there's nothing happening to you, you're not bearing much fruit, I want you to understand God is working in you. You just don't know why. You just don't know how. Because He promised when it feels like nothing happens, trust that God is at work in your life, you are called to bear fruit. You are called to bear fruit. Ayan yung promise ni Lord in that passage. Kaya wag ka nang magkumpara pa sa iba. Kailangan lang natin is for us to abide. Ano yung abide? You are communing with God, you are trusting in His Word, and finally, you are allowing God to transform you. You just have to allow God to transform you. Hindi nyo lang po alam at hindi nila alam kung ano yung katayuan ninyo. Pero si Lord, alam niya kung ano yung katayuan mo at alam niya kung paano siya mag-work sa buhay mo. And He promised, you are called to bear fruit. It's not just about bearing fruit. The second thing I really want to share is this one. God's desire for us is to remain fruitful. It's not just about experiencing who God is and allowing God to transform us, but also to remain fruitful. Ano ibig sabihin nito? In verse 16, verse uh, 16b, uh, 16b to 17, sabi niya dito, and that your fruit should be abide, so that whatever you ask to the Father in my name may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. I'm gonna use amplified ulit, ah. Um, I just like the translation. And keep on bearing. This is the promise of God. Once you appropriate that you are called to bear so much fruit, God is telling you that you will keep bearing. Hindi matatapos to. Magtutuloy-tuloy to that your fruit will remain and be lasting. I really like that. Yung promise ng Panginoon, hindi lang hindi lang to magtutuloy-tuloy at hindi to matatapos. Magbibear ka talaga ng fruit. What this was talking about, yes, once you experience God, God will use you to be a conduit of blessings to others. That's so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, as, a, as my representative, He may give to you. And your last command niya dito, this is what I command you, that you love and unselfishly seek the best for one another. Sabi niya, it's not just about experiencing, bearing fruit, but also remaining and having a lasting fruit. Question, sino dito you want to bear fruit? How about to have a lasting fruit. Almost every one of us, we, we are raising our hands. Pero, your unang premise is you have to allow God, right? And hindi lang you have to allow God, but you have to let God send and even use you. Hindi maglalasto forever if contain mo lang. Parang sasakyan. Pag ang sasakyan, in-stuck mo yan forever, masisira ka agad yan. Kailangan mo, in one week time, kailangan mong buhay yung makina para masustain. You have to use it. At ano yung sinasabi niya dito, external bearing fruit? Sinasabi niya dito, it's all about making disciples. It's all about being a conduit of His promises being a channel of blessing. That's why he said in the last verse that you love and unselfishly seek the best for one another. 
Hindi niya sinabi, for me. Pero to be honest, Lord, love, ang hirap po magmahal. Sino dito, ang dali mo magmahal? Makita mo isang tao, mahal na kita. <laughs> Di ba mahirap? Sobrang mahirap magmahal, lalo na yung mga taong hindi ka mahal-mahal. Tama? It's really hard. Pero sobrang clear dito, I command you that you love and unselfishly. Hindi nakabase sa anong perspective mo, opinion mo, pagiging judger mo. But sabi niya, it's all about the best for others. Tingin ka sa tabi mo, kaya mo bang mahalin yan? Oy, kinikilig yung iba It's really hard to love someone that is so unlovable. Someone who hurt you, someone who did something to you, someone, someone, someone pushed you away, someone did something wrong to you. It's really hard. Sobrang mahirap. Pero the good thing about it, it's not about you. It's not about the way how we perceive things but it's all about how God designed us. Sabi sa Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. I'm about to end. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no, ma- no one may boast. For we are His, for we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good which, which God pref, uh, preferred beforehand that we should walk in them. It's gonna be hard to love someone apart from the grace of God. But if you know the grace of God, then it's very possible to love someone, even that person is unlovable. What is this grace? We're going to try to look at the cross, and that is the grace. God died. Jesus Christ died on the cross just for you to know how valuable, how valuable you are. Atonement of our sins. He died in that cross so that we can have a new life, so that we can experience His love, unconditional and sacrificial love so that we can share the same love to others because we are created in Christ to do good works. Mahirap po talaga magmahal. Pero, isa lang po masasabi ko. Kung aalaw natin na yung grasya ng Panginoon ang manguna at hindi yung perspective at hindi yung sarili nating mission, I'm telling you, you will see that you can love someone, even that person is unlovable. Because he promised that we are created to do good works. Hindi po siya pilit. Hindi siya pilit na kailangan mong mahalin to, pero overflowing grace ng Panginoon para mahalin mo ang mga taong mahal ng Panginoon. I remember when I was a kid, as I end, there's a specific um, uh, powder that they are using. Kalburo. Alam yung kalburo? O yung iba hindi? So mga Gen Z at saka uh, mga, mga current generation, they're using ca- calcium carbide. Calcium carbide, they normally use it in order for them to ripe a specific, a specific uh, fruit. Pwedeng manga, pwedeng banana, Ito yung mga pinitas na nila, pero hindi pa hinog. Sabi nila, oh, naalala ko yan. Oh, yung kalburo, yung mga ganyan. Ang ginagawa nila, nilalagyan nila sa kaing to. Pag nilagyan nila sa kaing, nilalagyan nila ng kalburo at kusa siyang nakakatulong sa pag, pag, paghinog in a certain period of time. Pero, 
Ang problema dito, some other countries binaban na to, ang problema dito, yung taste ng mangga o kaya nung, nung saging na kinalburo, medyo tasteless siya. Medyo pilit siya. Maganda yung outer niya, pero yung loob niya, in reality, parang walang lasa. Why? Kasi hindi siya connected sa branches or sa branch. You know what? Our life is something like that. Apart from Christ, para kang kinalburo. Maalat yung buhay mo. Walang bunga. Walang asim. Walang tamis. Walang saya. That's why the Bible is telling us, you have to abide in Christ. Kasi he is calling us to be fruitful. Sabi mo sa tabi mo, hindi ka kinalburo. Remember, as I end, fruitfulness comes from abiding in Jesus Christ. It is about experiencing Him and unselfishly sharing His love. Sino dito na enjoy mo yung relationship mo kay Lord? Come on now. And the last question, sino dito willing ka i-share ang pagmamahal ng Panginoon? Remember, pinakamasarap pong ma-experience sa buhay, yes, yung ma-experience ang Panginoon, at lalo na gamitin ka ng Panginoon para ma-experience ang pagmamahal ng Panginoon ng taong kakilala mo. That's why I'm encouraging everyone, never forget, fruitfulness comes from abiding in Jesus Christ. It's all about experiencing Him and unselfishly sharing His love to everyone. Pamangkin mo, anak mo, asawa mo, kaibigan mo, ka-office mate mo, ka-love life mo, ka-chat mo sa Facebook, ka-DM mo sa, 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 sa Instagram, ka-tiktokers mo, lahat na. Share that unconditional and sacrificial love that God has for you and for them. Can I ask everyone to stand up? We're gonna worship God. I'm gonna ask the music team to come here in front. And as we worship God, can we just allow God to minister to all of us? Maybe some of you here, you're asking, Lord, parang walang, walang nangyayari naman sa buhay ko eh. But thank you for reminding, us, reminding me that, I, that you have a promise in my life that I'm gonna bear fruit. Na even ganito yung sitwasyon ko, you can even use the situation in order for me to share that love that you have for me. Can we just take this time to worship Him? Here I am, O oh Lord, you can have all of me before your throne.
our church, oh Lord, you can have all of me before your throne, laying it all at your feet, your grace has set be free. I'm pray for a group of people today. Maybe some of you here, this is the final moment that you're really pleading God for. You're asking, Lord, I want to experience that breakthrough or even that uh, bearing fruit in my life. Even how hard my situation is, this time I'm going to appropriate that you called me to be a bearing fruit, to have a bearing fruit life. If that is you, you just want to appropriate that. You just want to declare. You just want to tell and even shout for joy, Lord, this is the moment I'm going to receive that breakthrough that you, are, that you promised me. If that is you, I would like you to raise your hand and let me pray for you. Lord, you see the hands of these people declaring, appropriating your promise that no matter what is happening around me, I'm going to declare that you called me to bear much fruit. Lord, thank you because you prepared something amazing even this year. You prepared something that is so honoring to your name. Lord, I pray that whatever doubts I have right now, Whatever fears, whatever walls, whatever hindrances that I have with me, in order for me not to declare that you call me to be a bearing fruit, Lord, we rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, I'm saying that I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Lord, thank you for that word. And finally, it's going to be hard to appropriate that you are a bearing fruit, that, that, that the promise that God has for you, na magbibear ka ng fruit, if you don't have a relationship with God. Remember, abiding is all about communing with God. Surrendering your life, trusting in His Word, and allowing Him to transform you. It's not just about knowing Jesus Christ. Filipinos, we are used to with that name, Jesus. The question is, do you commune with Him? Maybe some of you here, you have to surrender your life to God. Or some of you here, you want, you need to, um, you need to recommit yourself to the Lord. And if that is you, no looking around, bow your heads. No looking around. It's all about you and God. In the count of three, I just want you to raise your head and say, Lord, that is me. Ikaw, kinakausap mo ko ngayon, Panginoon. Sinasabi mo sa akin na i ko yung hand ko by faith. If that is you, count of three, you raise your hand. One, two, three. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. There's a lot. For those people raising their hands, let me just pray for you and pray after me as well. Lord, thank you for this wonderful encounter that I have with you. Lord, I pray that you will minister to me. I'm sorry for all the things that I've done in the past. But right now, I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior. Be in control of my life. Be the master. And I appropriate every promise that you have given us. Lord, bless everyone who's raising their hands. You may put down your hands in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. The Bible is telling us if there's one person who depends, the whole heaven is rejoicing. There's more than 10 people who raised their hand. Can we just give a hand to God for that? For those people who raised their hands, please approach us after the service. We want to explain the decision that you have made so that we can journey with you. And finally, don't move yet. Next week, we're going to do something. Diba sabi natin in the last verse that we're going to share love to one another unselfishly. And we're going to commit ourselves next week we're going to do something amazing. Magkakaroon po tayo ng community, fun, food, and fellowship. Okay? 
within the service. We're going to serve something for everyone so that as a community together, we will walk together. We will be in faith together. We will declare the promises of God together. At ito po, during the service, bandang latter part, magkakaroon tayo ng ma-fellowship dito, magkukulitan tayo, magkukwentuhan tayo, makikilala na tayo, makikilala namin kayo, at hindi na lang kayo nakaupo dito. Tama ba yun? You can bring your, you can bring foods as well so that sama-sama tayo dito. Community. And also, you can bring your friends. This is a great opportunity for you to be used by God. Okay. We're gonna pray last one. For this community, maybe some of you is, Lord, meron ako naisip na, meron ako naisip na isama. Meron ako pinag-pray na isang tao na gusto kong masama. Gusto kong makilala ang Panginoon. Gusto niya makilala ang Panginoon at gusto kong magpagamit sa'yo. I would like you to raise your hand and I'm gonna pray for you. We're gonna believe next week kasama mo sa dito. And just raise your hands. Can everyone raise your hand? Because I really believe every, every one of us here, merong ilalagay si Lord sa puso mo para makilala niya si Lord. Lord, thank you for this wonderful opportunity that you've given us. By next week, we are declaring that your name will be glorified. Your name will be magnified through your word. And I pray that you will take away my fear, take away my doubts, sa pag-invite ng specific person na sinasabi mo, dadaling ko next week. And even right now, I'm declaring na walang magiging conflict sa schedule niya, sa, sa resources niya, o kahit mag-bless na ako sa kanyang Panginoon, I'm believing by next week that person will surrender his life, her life, in your kingdom, in your name. Lord, thank you for molding us, for using us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face, face shine to you. May the Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. Don't forget, be a blessing next week. Bring something, bring, dala po kayo ng food, kahit ano, and have a great uh, Sunday. Pasa inyo lahat. Maraming maraming pong salamat. Next week, community. 